Now, hey guys. Well, following my last trip down to uh, Portland, I became quite sort of like obsessed with um, the burn prison there and whether or not it may be a star fort. Now, I've um, had other thoughts about it before, and before I knew about star forts, I thought it was um, a pyramid or a pyramidal structure. But um, I'm more on the star fort now and I've made a bit of a video up. Okay, right, so what is a star fort? Well, this is a star fort. This one is in India. So they're all over the world. And Wiki calls them bastion sort forts. And they're saying that it evolved during the early modern period of gunpowder. They're, um, extremely beautiful, as you can see here, gorgeous things, seriously, um, they were supposed to have been built so they had no dead zones for fights and things like that, but these are the, this is this sort of information that was interesting me, like this here slopes when the newly effective maneuverable siege cannon came into military strategy in the 15th century blah 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 the response was to arrange the walls to be embedded into ditches fronted by earthen slopes so in Malta the ditches were cut into the native rock and the wall at the inside of the ditch was simply unquarried native rock as the walls became lower they became more vulnerable to uh, assault. So here's a list of star forts, and they're everywhere. They're all over the world, but they're just everywhere. And I'd never even heard of them until I started watching Martin Lietke and New Earth and people like this. I'd never heard of them. So this guy here has got a very cool site. Really into them. He's been all over the place, sort of checking them out. And here's his UK map. So here is where the Isle of Portland is here. So it's called the Vern Citadel. They call it a citadel. And it reminds me very much of this place here, Charles Fort, which is in Ireland. And this is an aerial photograph here. It's right on the edge of a cliff. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? So, the Encyclopedia of Portland History says it's a former citadel of mid-19th century origin, located on Vern Hill, the highest point of Portland at 500 foot, designed primarily as a siege fortress. These are the dates that I question. Built between 1858 and 1881 using a mixture convict labour, free labour and civilian contractors under the supervision of the Royal Engineers while many alterations to the design were made over the course of its construction. That is the bit. Yeah. Citadel's location, Vern Hill, was selected for its commanding position overlooking the harbour. So it was a probable site of an Iron Age hill fort. In addition, a signal station was there, built there during the Napoleonic era. So it's got all this stuff up there. It's like a bit of a mishmash. It's very strange stuff up by um, on the top of Portland. It tells you all about the construction of the sitter cell, the evacuation of the ditch, lots of stuff. So what is it? What's a citadel? A citadel is the core fortified area of a town or city. Maybe a fortress, castle, or a fortified centre. 
the term is a diminutive of city and thus means little city. The fortification with bastions, like this, bastion, structure, projecting outward. Citadel is the strongest part of the system. Okay, this is quite an interesting thing here. I might have to go back to this. Okay, so the Bern Citadel, 19th century citadel, there's a couple of shots of it here, that's the moat, that's side view of it, part of it. front gate, that's grade 2 listed. I'll have a, another look at some of these photos in a minute, I just want to give you a little intro into this. This is a citadel of Quebec, which reminds me quite a lot of um, the Verne Citadel. It's, all of it has quite gone away here. Okay, so we know what star forts are, and here's our Burn Citadel. And he's got some photos down here. That's the impressive entrance. Look how deep it is, look at the work on it. the other side of the citadel southern entrance. Okay then, right, so I'm going to show you some maps of it and some photographs telling you, showing you what I am seeing. So if we go back to our starforts.com um, page, you can see that he hasn't sort of given us a starfort for here, the closest one is. Out of why? Which um, I did have a look at as well, and it does look a bit similar. So. Here is a map of the south of England. There's the Isle of Wight. Here's Portland. Here. And here's a close up of Portland. The Burn the area we're going to look at is this area here. Known as the Common here. Sideways shot of it. It's a castle below. Here's a top of graphical look at it. Burn would be here. I like this one. I'm going to pause it here. This is a Luftwaffe photograph of the Verne from above in uh, 1940 something. But you can really see the shape of these walls here now. And further down and more sort of triangulated shapes as it goes down. That's a great, I think that's a great photo that one. Here's another aerial shot of it. Look at these corners here. This is uh, the road going down. And carry on here. The next one. What's that one again? Sorry about that. I did, I said I liked it though. <laughs> you can almost see where it's tumbled over the edge here. Right, 
these are some photographs of the actual building now. So this was allegedly built by um, prisoners, convicts, normal people, oil engineers and a whole pile of others. This is a private photograph that I found on the internet. It's very good at showing various elements of it because they've used like a um, panoramic sweep. So this is the southern entrance here. The moat is all under here. We got these earthen ramparts here. And this area over here, I'll be looking at some of the stuff that's over here as well, which I think was connected to it. An awesome person stood there. And here's um, another view of it. Looking at these, these look faced, you see. This is great. So you can see they've got like grass roofs. This here, it's just elements of it. I think are new elements are old, like everything. God, how many times did I put this one in? <laughs> I think I became a little bit addicted to this photograph. <laughs> okay, this is a bit of an earlier shot. So this was the new bit that they built in. And even then you can see it's two different types of brickwork here. And this is where they've incorporated bare walls. Here's more walls. You can see the steps going down into the moat. next one. This is the actual moat. I've never been down in the moat. I know quite a few people who have. People have fallen from there with horrific results. And the thing is, it's virtually impossible to get out the actual prison anyway, so the moat is like, um, right, here's that door. This is grade two, been saved stuff now. Look at this here. You see? All this. This is looking up the hill. This is awesome. This is an awesome shot. Look at this. One, two, three. And there are other bridges. Oh yeah, there's one there. And these ramparts. But this right. I bought I've got a couple of books here about Portland. One is um an archaeological book and one is an awesome book by Gabby Billcliffe called The Spirit of Portland, Revelations of a Sacred Isle and he looks at all sorts of stuff about Portland. There's bur burrows there, you know, burial mounds, there's sacred stones and as I've said before in my vids I was, I was sort of raised there from the ages of about 9 to 18 and a lot of very strange stuff happened there. We lived in a really weird house, which has been demolished now to make way for the uh, Portland Borstal Young Offenders Institute. But um, I'm going to look deeper into the sacred geometry and the history of giants. But I thought I'd start off with this because it's not what they're saying it is. So they say here that the um, evidence of coastal erosion around um, a little castle that's further on around the coast and which I filmed last time I was down there. Um, they say that uh, there was a loss of several square miles of Portland and there was a huge disaster but they can't find any evidence for it. There's no, nothing in the chronicles. So some lady called King Wari found um, uh, an unpublished work called The High Place and it refers to an area of Portland that was a sacred site of ceremony called The High Place. I mean this this place is just incredible really and she's saying that um, roughly this place is still central as regards north and south, although it ceased to be equidistant between east and west after the 
great cataclysm about 1100 AD when the undersea earthquake which wrought havoc in the Channel Isles found its vibrations felt on the opposite shore. So a whole pile of Portland fell into the sea below the burn, below the citadel. And I've got some photos of this. Right, this is the um, grade two listed entrance. Look at this thing. Look. Again, the Victorians showing us that they could do all this absolutely ridiculous stuff. I've, um, I used to work in here. This is the tunnel going through. Massive tunnel. Really, really long, this tunnel. And this is a um, little side entrance. All this uh, other brickwork here. All this sort of like brickwork notches in, across, in. It's just very, very sort of like, you know, considered. Everything about it is like really sort of worked. This is inside the ramparts. I've seen this before in some other, in other star forts. Of course, all this is modern. This can deceive you. This is deceptive. This is all sort of like all this wood here. Amazing place, isn't it, really? More of the ramparts here. And, um, I would have done this before, but I'd written to this guy, um, Urban Explorer, asking for permission to use his um, some of his photographs, but he didn't get back to me, but I'll give him a credit because he's done some amazing work, amazing, going out urban exploring. I'm really into urban exploring, I really must do it. So this is some of his stuff where he managed to get in recently. Um, I think they were between um, roles. Uh, the, the, the prison has recently sort of stopped being a prison for deportees and become a prison for um, refugees, immigration centre and uh, I think they're going to make it into something else. I don't, I don't know. When I worked there it was more of a um, men doing life and deportees. So you can see Urban Explorer went in there and then he went down. This is a bit I'm interested in. There's a hell of a lot of stuff under Portland. This was all built in Victorian times, remember, by prisoners and a bunch of other people. So now he's really down below. This is ancient, isn't it? I can remember when I was a kid, I, I was, I was um, going around Portland and one of the things that you, I mean, this even looks mud flooded, doesn't it? One of the things that um, I used to feel a lot was this sense of everything being really ancient. So I think we've got a couple more from this guy. Right, this is an area just beyond the burn. Um, it's uh, just as you're sort of approaching the south gate, there's a strange sort of like area that they say was built in 1892. Now I found about five or six different dates. I found so many different dates for this, it's just ridiculous. We used to call them the ghost tunnels when we were kids, or the dungeons. And we used to really freak ourselves out playing there. So they were supposed to be for the um, the war and they probably were used then. Here's what, here's a, you can see actually that this has been put on afterwards because it's chipping away quite nicely there. It's an entrance to one of the dungeons. Look at this, look at this. This work here. Of course it's all been um, uh, gated off but people go up there and uh, here's, here it is. Yeah. And the burn is to the back here. It's all part I just think it's all part of the same thing. Some more of it. It's very creepy. We can see that it's old brickwork and then they've brought in there's a lot of it's concreted from the wall, but it's in a dip. So 
just think I think I just think it was part of the old structure that they got a grip of and um and there it is from the from the sky. I think it's from the sky, from the uh, from an aerial view, an aerial perspective. And again it's so creepy down here, you can go down here and there's nobody around, you know. Steps down here. My dad's got a funny, a strange story about this place. Right, this is allegedly a photograph of it being used in the war. Could be. So, if I go back to um, my uh, photos album. This picture of Portland here. Of Citadel. Sorry, but dungeons. Alright, so the other book that I've got talks about how the Vern was used through the Iron Age. The Vern Fort was almost certainly built on the site of a named Iron Age hill fort, but there have never been adequate excavations to prove it or to provide precise details of the nature of these old structures which were there. It is highly unlikely that these heights would not have been utilised as they were ideal for defensive purposes. I mean, it just looks like a, a star fort to me that's been completely like remodelled and reused and I think it was all uh, probably all bashed around quite a lot in the, the cataclysm when a lot of it fell into the sea and um, the place below the prison is um, a place called East Weirs. So here's the Vern on the top here. There. And this is the cliffs around the edge. This is this is why I was interested in that other pyramidal shape earlier that we looked at. This is supposed to be the rifle range below. Urban Explorer had a good look at that. This is below East Weirs. It's all been brought by Portland Port now. These were, this is below East Weirs. I used to play down here as children. And it's just a mass of fallen brickwork, huge great big stones. So yeah i think it was a star fort this is sort of like the edges going around the cliffs see what i mean this one here it's a hugely photo photogenic place as well you know? so i'm going to do more on Portland because it is a fascinating place and I do think that maybe it was a star fort <laughs>